Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. During my time making videos for this channel, I've gone through dozens of different setups from miking real amplifiers, to using real amps with cab simulation, to using single amp in a box style pedals, and even using amp modeler pedals such as this one here. While I've been able to get a good sound from each of those and I've used them extended amount of times for my main rig and for recording, one thing that I never tried is to set up a digital rig on my computer. And when Neural DSP reached out to me and asked, oh, would you like to check out the new Matteo Sassato uh, archetype. Well, I said, this is the perfect opportunity to see if I could create a digital rig that I would be happy with. And ultimately, would I be happy recommending it to you? So in this video, I'll share my experiences with setting up a digital rig on my computer. I'll share the steps that I took to dial in this rig, and that's gonna save you time and the headache of having to work this all out for yourself. And lastly, at the end of the video, I'll give you my final thoughts on whether I think this is a viable solution for you. To get started, you'll need some form of computer to run some AMP SIM software. I will be using the new Matteo Sassato Archetype, a plugin by NeuroDSP. You'll need an audio interface or a way of connecting your guitar signal to your computer. And of course, you're going to need a guitar and lastly, some headphones or some speakers to hear the playback. When I first loaded up the software, I was shocked to find how muddy it sounded. And no matter what I did, for example, changing the amp's treble, the presence, the mics, the mic placement, so on and so forth, it still sounded like farty bass def. So much so, I was willing to throw in the towel, contact NeuroDSP, tell them I wasn't interested, and never trying amp sim software again. But in one final act of desperation, I searched for to see if there were, I was doing anything wrong. And this video by John saved me. Thanks very much, John. The short version is I learned I need to make sure I was using a high Z line input on my audio interface. Otherwise, there was a lot of top end loss from the signal. And just like that, I looked at my interface, noticed a button that said instrument and clicked it. And it was like the amp heavens had opened and gone was that muddy tone. And in its place was a normal sounding amplifier. And here's a comparison to clarify. I also learned I needed to use the ASIO option in the plugin to get the lower latency settings for the best playing experience. The last part I learned is I need to balance the input signal. And luckily in our plugin here, we've got a clear indicator there so I can set the signal at a hot enough level and not too hot to clip the signal. All right, now for the fun part, dialing in our digital rig. So in my experience, one of the best places to start with any setup, no matter if it's digital or a physical setup, is to choose your uh, style of amplifier. There are three main types of amplifier that you might be aware of. You know, you have that kind of voxy sound, the Fender clean kind of sound, and that higher gain Marshall kind of sound. And uh, quite ironically, in this um, plugin that I've got here, if I look at the amp descriptions, it seems like we've got something similar going on there. For the first amp here, it's kind of sounds like a voxy kind of style amp to me. The middle amp is our clean kind of Fender style amp and the last amp is that high gain kind of martial territory. Personally for me, I like the Fender style amp and the main reason I like these kind of amplifiers is because they have that kind of like really warm low end and sparkly top with a kind of a scooped in the middle and it just suits ever so well to the middle pickup position on a Telecaster. The first thing I'm going to do is how I would do with my physical rig is um, it's a bit gainy at the moment. <laughs> for my liking. So I'm gonna bring that gain down. It's sounding a bit thick as well. So I'm just gonna try this normal setting here. But now you know the volumes come down so we can compensate that with the master and the output. And uh, you can just check the output level. To me, it's sounding quite boxy at the moment. Um, I find largely the reason that is, is because different types of cabs that you're using, if it's like a modeler or a real uh, cab or using these uh, digital uh, plugins, is the different kinds of cabs will give a radically different kinds of EQ. In the case here, I've only got the one amplifier, uh, sorry, the one type of speaker cap to work with, which is fine. So another thing I can do is just mess with the different mic settings. I've had experience of using quite a few modelers, and to me the SM57 always sounds a bit like, um, kind of like mid-focused, so it's a wonderful microphone, don't get me wrong, but I prefer like a warmer sound with um, a sparkly top end, let's say, and I find the, no matter what, I've used in the past the U, UA, the U47 mic as we got here, uh, seems to work the best. 
sounding a bit too warm still. Right, I'm happy with that for now. What I usually do now is I'll bring in some kind of reverb. The reverb sounds wonderful um, in this plugin. And I find like most default settings is a bit over the top. So I'm gonna cut the highs a little bit here. Two of the main features on a reverb pedal you really wanna mess with is um, gonna be the decay. So how long the reverb goes on for after it starts and how wet the signal is. <laughs> For me, I'm happy around there. I like the plate style reverb, so I'm happy there's uh, one in this plugin. So the next thing I do in when I'm setting up a rig is I'll add a compressor and it's kind of just to even out note volumes. So when I'm picking, they've all got more of an even, um, you know, attack and uh, volume to them. And also it helps with um, tapping, especially if you strum a chord. <laughs> making sure that chord doesn't overpower the sounds of the taps. If I bring the compressor in here, I had a little play with it. I found at 12 o'clock pretty much <laughs> it was exactly what I wanted, but I did boost the volume a little bit and the EQ too. So if we try that same thing again, I can hear already that those taps are coming through a bit better and the note levels all seem to be a bit more dynamically balanced. So the next thing I'll do is on a physical rig, on a digital rig, no matter what it is, I'll try and bring in some overdrive just to give that nice bit of um, like a sparkly kind of crunch kind of sound. And luckily we've got an overdrive pedal here. So if I do bring that in, it's, it's a bit too much at first. In my opinion, for what I like. So I'll bring down the gain and I don't like this mid boost, it kind of boosts the wrong frequency for this amplifier. Uh, it's a bit woolly. But it's boosting like a really like low mid. So I'm sure it works better on the other amplifier settings. So I brought that down to zero, bring up the tone a little bit, the volume to compensate for the gain going down. And that's where I like to live. I do love that that sound, um, just a light bit of overdrive into like a Fender style amplifier with a Telecaster on the middle pickup position there. Again, this is personal preference. This is how I like to set it up. The next thing I'd usually do is on a physical rig, again, I'd just like to have a, a second overdrive that's higher gain, even a distortion pedal, let's say. And it's just for those times I do wanna use a, a bit more gain and let's say on the bridge pickup. So again, this uh, default setting, a bit too much and we've lost a lot of the, the bottom end. So I'm gonna bring down the gain quite a bit. I'm gonna cut those higher frequencies and boost to compensate. I'm taking a look at the output meter to try and balance the two. Probably still a bit too much gain for what I like, so I'll bring it down just a smidgen more. That's it for how I would set up a bass sound. I've got my clean sound. I've got my slightly overdriven sound. And then I've got the really distorted kind of sound. Moving on to the extra effects, the, the fun little things here. Um, it really depends on obviously the plugin that you're using. I just wanted to quickly show some of the ones that are on here because I have played with them. And, and to be honest, like this is one of the best um, tape echo 
it's emulations I've heard from, from a plugin, um, especially in the neural DSP stuff compared to some of the other delays I've tried. But this one, it just sounds wonderful. <laughs> Got a lovely tap tempo too. Mix with the reverb is a bit too much, maybe. Yeah, so reverb and the delay there just sound wonderful in, in this plugin. The other things was there's um, like, a, like a tremolo, um, if I bring that one up. And they got a lovely bit of lush chorus as well. Very wobbly, bring the speed down. get a bit too much there. <laughs> right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, just joking, but um, would I be happy using this as my main rig? After this experience, I would say yes, and I would say this is a viable option for you as well. But some pros of it would be that, obviously, this is going to be a lot cheaper buying this plugin than buying all these individual effects, especially when you look at like the tape echo and stuff like that. As well as that, you can use this, it's integrated directly to your computer, so you can go ahead and record straight away. Yeah, this is definitely a viable option. And if you would like a preset that I made in this Matteo Sasato plugin, in case you do pick it up, then I've put that in a link down below in the description for you. Now you have a better idea of how to dial in a digital rig. Another question that you may have is, well, how can I set this up as a physical rig? And in this video here, I'll walk you through how you can use just pedals to dial in a killer math rock kind of Midwest emo tone. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much to NeuroDSP for sponsoring this video. Thank you to the patrons and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.